Carl, if I understand it correctly, um, you're saying that a lot of uh, black men are being, or a lot of people in the community, I guess, maybe other people as well, are being locked up because for, for petty crimes that perhaps they shouldn't be locked up for. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. I uh, mean, the amount of time that they get well, well, color um, and among the time. Well, I, I actually am one of those that believe that if you, there are a lot of people in 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 prison for for marijuana, for for drug peddling, drug use, and so on and so forth. Actually, I believe that if you take a public health approach to to drug use, it's going to to benefit society much better than an incarceration approach because there are a lot of people out there, and then uh, you know in St. Leonard's house, you know we have some of them there. Well, on a weekly basis, you know this brother, this guy is just trying to. He's just trying to deal with what he called his demon, right? Correct. And every week, it's it, uh, time after time. I mean, if they, you could probably get him out there with some heroin or whatever his drug of his choice is, you can lock him up. But guess what? He's just going to come right back. And if you really treat uh, um, some of the, the drug issues as public health issues, even some of the domestic violence issues, if you really take a public health approach and you try to help people to be able to solve their problems rather than just incarcerating them, I think well, there'll be a benefit for society, both in reduced costs because of the higher cost of incarceration, but second of all, we've also dealing with, with, with serious problems that people really have. But the fact of the matter is that you may well, that when people do things that are serious, some people need to be curtailed. You probably needed to be saved from yourself. Yes, Because exactly. perhaps you were, you, were, you were heading down the road, the road of death. So, you know, we find sometimes that putting people away to have them think about and adjust them li their lives is a good thing if they are treated in the kinds of ways that are going to allow them to become better citizens. Uh, we have another caller. Caller? I just want to ask the doctor and Mr. Turner his thoughts about this, uh, about our young children being conditionalized for prison. If you look at the uh, architecture of a lot of the schools that we have right now, it looks like a courthouse or they may look like in front of a, a, um, a, a police station. And that got to have an effect on a child going in some place to be educated and it looking like something like law enforcement. I, I just want to hear you uh, men's thoughts on that because it looked like, 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 like a prison or a courthouse these children are going up into to be educated. Yes, you know, Carla, thanks for the point. I've heard this so many times that Mr. Turner, who has a lot more experience than inside of a prison um, than I do, uh, can, can speak on that. But one of the things, I did a movie, and, and Carla, you can probably look up uh, www.justicedelayed.net. It's a movie, one of the two movies that I produced this year called Justice Delayed, the John Walker story at justicedelayed.net. And uh, one of the things that John Walker, who actually is one of the co-defendants for, for a murder that four black men, apparently uh, young boy, boys in Buffalo, actually supposedly killed uh, a 62-year-old uh, white man, but there were only one set of footprints for four guys. I don't know how that happened. Obviously, we believe that John Walker and his co-defendants are innocent. But one of the things that John said is that he went through a lot of those kind of alternative schools. You know, he went through school and he went to a juvenile, uh, like we, I, I mentor at St. Charles, you know, uh, but he went to another place like, like St. Charles equivalent in Buffalo, New York uh, area. And he said that, you know, he feels that his school itself, um, his, his, the projects that he lived in, and um, uh, at even the juvenile place that he went to, to get correction, seemed to have been setting him up. And in fact, when he got into jail, he was already as if he had already had an introduction to jail from living life outside. So, so that's a point that you're making uh, that's very important. And we don't want to forget to try to answer the previous question as to far as what we recommend and so on. Um, and because we don't just want to talk about the problems, you know, in fact, we are part of the solution because uh, Mr. Turner, instead of winging it and trying to go out in the streets and hope that he will never rob again or whatever, he, decides to trans he decided to add some more time, structured time, and, 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 and uh, submit himself to St. Leonard's house to be able to have uh, some, some type of transformation. So even if he's still institutionalized, hopefully he's been deinstitutionalized back right. in society. But what's your, what's your response to the caller's question? Well, well I don't want to date myself, but uh, there's mm -hmm. a movie I saw a long time ago called The Education of Sonny Carson. And if you can find that on, on, in some file in the library or video store, uh, that movie kind of depicts what you were talking about. But as far as what Dr. St. John was saying, uh, I went to St. Leonard's house simply because after you come out of prison, especially after serving over th almost three decades, uh, you need some structure in your life. It's not the small places that you fear. You fear the wide open places. When I went to prison, eight tracks were vogue. When I come out, they had uh, uh, MP3 players and, and all kind of other 
technological gadgets that I wasn't familiar with. So I was lost. So I needed that structure to help keep me grounded. And St. Leonard's is one of the best places that a person come out of prison, especially after long-term incarceration, can go. And if there were more places like that, perhaps we could tar start curtailing some of the uh, 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 recidivism rate and some of the large amount of black people that are going to prison, any people that are going to prison. Now, Mr. Today, if I were to ask you this, so, uh, suppose I was uh, sitting in the room, and uh, by the way, you guys don't know that, but we have a very beautiful and intelligent telephone operator sitting here in the corner. You can't see it's not part of the show, but she's an important part of the person. When you call in, you sometimes talk to her. Suppose she was the only one in the room, and I wasn't there, and I asked you, you know, the person who she were to ask you, what have you learned from the relationship course that I teach um, um, uh, with Mr. Bell? at St. Leonard's house on, on, on Tuesdays. What have you learned from that regarding parenting and relationships? Well, the most profound thing that I learned was that one size doesn't, doesn't fit all. And depending on that particular child, you have to try and be flexible and versatile because you might have to raise your voice with one child and that might work. And you might have to talk softly with the other one and that might work. And it also depends on moves. Dr. St. John is very, very good at, at explaining different situations to us and and uh, all us in the class at St. Linda's house we look forward to those days when he come over we spend an hour and a half with him and he will stay later and spend some additional time with us one-on-one -on -one if we need be and those relationship classes help us not only deal with our children but with our significant others with our siblings and with other people also because he covers the whole gamut yes and uh, I was talking to Mr. Turner uh, before the show and he was uh, telling me that his because he had lost his uh, uh, toddler and and um, basically very young child experiences as much as possible. Though his oldest child was eleven, his youngest child was three uh, three months and two days when he went to prison. But he wants to relive that through his grandchildren, right? Vicarious, <laughs> vicarious through his grandchildren. So 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 grandkids, you can jump on daddy's back a lot. You know he's young and strong. You know you can trip him in the living room and uh, play around with him. He'll enjoy all that and some. All that and some more. But but what kind of what what sort of things learning from Saint Leonard how that you have applied to your children and the grandchildren in the process? Well, because uh, St. Linden House is a very structured program, you try and uh, put so much joy into so little time. Mm -hmm. Weekends are the times that we get a chance to go home with our and visit our families and whatnot. The rest of the time is spent in programs and classes. And uh, those weekends are so precious and so full of joy and, and, and so innovating that when Monday comes around, sometimes you're looking forward to get back to St. Linden so you can get some rest. Now, what type of relationships were you able to have with your son and your daughters while incarcerated? Well, that was dependent on when their mother could bring them down. Of course, you had uh, school and distance and various other factors that came into play. But uh, I was one of the fortunate ones, and uh, my family stuck by me throughout the duration of my incarceration. So, although I was seeing a lot of my children, you never see enough of them. And uh, a lot of times when problems would occur, you could try and solve them on, on the phone or on visits, and you, you just don't have enough quality time to solve those problems. So you feel inadequate. You feel uh, like you let your uh, children down. Because the fact is, when you do time, your, your family does time with you. Do you think your children, if your children are, are bitter about you? No, no, no. I think they had some bitter moments. That's only natural for them to have some bitter moments. But uh, I came out with a lot of guilt about that, and I've talked to them, and they always uh, tell me that they don't feel like that because we love you and we're glad you're home. And, and I still plan on pushing my two grown daughters in swings because I missed all of that. <laughs> Can you imagine that? The time is already over. Would you like to see Mr. Turner back? We'll certainly have this opportunity. I certainly want to have him back there. We must come to an end. All great things, even greater things, must come to an end. Again, I'm your host, Dr. Peter K.B. St. Jean, sitting in for Dr. Georgie Smith. The do's and don'ts of parenting. We ask you to tune in with us again sometime. Thanks a lot for calling. Thank you.